Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Saeed. In this video lecture series, I am going to discuss some of the basics concepts of fractional calculus. What is fractional calculus? Why it is so important? What are the basics theory that we need to understand the idea behind fractional calculus? Since we already familiar with these notations dy by dx which is the first derivative of y with respect to x and then second derivative of y and third derivative and so on and n derivative of y where n is a positive integer. So we already know that we can differentiate a function one time, a two time, a three time, a four time and so on but we cannot differentiate a function between these positive integer like one half time, 1.1 time, we have only able to differentiate a function integer time. Okay. But in fractional calculus, we want to extend this idea from positive integer to any arbitrary real number. This means we want to evaluate the half derivative of some function even the pth derivative of some function or even complex numbers like 1 plus 2 iota derivative of some function. This extension of, call, of classical calculus is called fractional calculus. So the name is a little bit misleading. So it's not the calculus of fraction or fractional numbers, neither it is the some fractions of calculus. It is calculus in which we differentiate a function arbitrary time. So if we, if we define it, we can see that the fractional calculus is a special branch of applied analysis which deals with derivative of arbitrary order, real or complex. So this means in fractional calculus, we generalize the notion of ordinary differentiation from integer order to any arbitrary order and we will know how we can uh, achieve that goal. But before I am just giving you a graphical approach. Since we know that I have drawn three graphs here, one in pink color which is the graph of y is equal to x square and then graph of green y uh, uh, 2x which is the derivative of x square. Okay? And third one is the derivative of 2x which is 2 in blue lines. So as we can see that the graph of x square is a parabola and if we differentiate it one time we get 2x which is a straight line passing through origin which is drawn in green and if we differentiate one more time we get a constant 2 which is a straight line parallel to x-axis lying 2 units above the x-axis. We can even draw a third time but in that case we will get 0 x-axis and all the next derivative will be 0. This is the idea that we have already are familiar with. But here we want to know what is the derivative of this function y is x square between 1 and 2 like what is the half derivative of x square, what is the 1.5 derivative of this y is x square. Graphically it means how this pink graph is transformed to this green graph which is a straight line because in classical calculus since we have no idea what is the derivative between 0 and 1 so we have no idea how this curve is transformed from this parabola to a straight line and the same way how this straight line which is drawn in green transform to this blue line which is horizontal but by the help of fractional calculus we would be able to take the derivative of order which lies between 0 and 2. So in that case we will able to see how these curves transform from one shape to another and we will see this in a few minutes. Okay. So how we are going to achieve this goal, how we are going to differentiate a function of ordinary time like how we would be able to differentiate a function half time or pi of time. We will start with the basics differentiation knowledge. So suppose I have a function 
y is equal to x to the power n where n is some integer okay i differentiate this function one time so let's y prime is as we know that n time x to the power n minus 1 and if i take one more derivative y double prime i get n into n minus 1 x to the power n minus 2 which if i multiply and divide by divide by n minus 2 factorial and divide by the same number n minus 2 factorial into x to the power n minus 2. If I combine these three terms from, from the knowledge of factorial, this can be written as n factorial and the bottom I can write n minus 2 factorial into x to the power n minus 2 which can be done in closed form. So using this pattern if I take the three third derivative of this function since the symmetry here since is the second derivative so here it is 2 and here it is 2 and if I take one more derivative the answer would be n factorial over n minus 3 factorial x to the power n minus 3. So, under this symmetry I can differentiate so far k some integer k which is less than n I can write the kth derivative of this function equal n factorial over n minus k factorial x to the power n minus k. So, this is the generalized form of the derivative kth derivative of the function x to the power n. Okay, here as k is here an integer, so I can generalize or replace this k which is an integer to some real number alpha of arbitrary, arbitrary number alpha. So, this becomes y to the order of alpha would be equal to n factorial. I just need to replace k by alpha. So, it is n minus alpha factorial x to the power n minus alpha. Okay, since alpha is here any arbitrary real number, it need not to be a integer. So, the expression in the denominator which is n minus alpha factorial will have meaning only this factorial signs has a meaning only if we have integer here since alpha is no longer an integer so n minus alpha factorial can be written by using the definition of gamma function which is an extension of factorial function so we know that gamma of some number n is equal to integral from 0 to infinity e raised to power minus t t raised to power n minus 1 dt. So, this is the extension of this factorial symbol and it carries many beautiful properties like if n is integer then gamma n plus 1 would equal to n factorial and if x is any number since this integral is convergent for n greater than 0. So, take x any positive real number, positive real number. So, one more nice property is gamma x plus 1 is equal to x time gamma of x. And if x is negative half, so x gamma of 1 by 2 is equal to square root of pi which has very nice representation of gamma half half. Okay, using these properties, actually the first one, the last expression can be written as the alpha order derivative of y is equal to n factorial over n minus alpha factorial which becomes gamma n minus alpha plus 1 x to the power n minus alpha. So, if I use notation capital D 
for derivative of order alpha of this function y or more precisely the function x to the power n this can be written as n factorial whole over gamma of n minus alpha plus 1 x to the power n minus alpha so this is the formula of finding the derivative of x to the power n of any arbitrary order alpha so we could able to achieve to get this formula only with the help of this extension which is gamma function uh, which is first time introduced by Euler in 1729 so we can say that with the help of gamma function the fra fractional calculus has its birth so here if we take some example like if I take n is equal to 2 and alpha is equal to 1 by 2 which means if I want to calculate the half derivative of x to the power 2 I just need to replace n with 2 and alpha is half so it becomes n which is 2 factorial over gamma of n which is 2 minus alpha which is half plus 1 and x to the power 2 and minus half so this becomes 2 factorial which is 2 and gamma of 2 plus 1 3 3 minus 1 by 2 which is 5 by 2 and 5 by 2 can be written as an x to the power of course 3 by 2 it becomes 2 x to the power 3 by 2 and gamma 5 by 2 using this property can be written as gamma 1 plus 3 by 2 which is 2 x to the power 3 by 2 and 3 by 2 gamma 3 by 2 and further gamma 3 by 2 can be broken as 1 plus half and again it, it is 1 by 1 half times gamma of 1 half which is 1 by 2 and scaled up by using third property so that means the half derivative of x square is equal to 2 x to the power 3 by 2 and in the denominator I have this 3 by 2 and then this is 1 by 2 and square root of pi so this becomes 4 4 times 2 8 8 x to the power 3 by 2 over 3 square root of pi so this is the half derivative of x square so in the same way we can change the values of alpha to 0 0.5 like uh, 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 and finally like we can take alpha 0 0.1 0 0.2 so on 0 0.5 which is here and then 0 0.9 and finally 1 which is the first derivative of x square so here I will get the answer 2x and here if, if alpha is 0 it would return the original function x square so between 0 and 1 I could able to get the derivative of this x square function and I could draw these functions and I could see how the curve x square is transformed into this straight line 2x okay here in maple I entered this formula the formula I just derived previously I put it here n and alpha and to check this formula I took two values one for n and half for alpha which means this expression is basically the derivative of x half derivative of x which is 2 x square root over square root of pi then fractional 2 0 means the zero order derivative of x square which is of course x square and then one 
first derivative of x squared which is 2x and then 1.1 derivative 1.2 1 1.3 so I solve these sim, uh, few derivatives between 1 and 2 and these are the answer you can see that we can now differentiate a function of any arbitrary order. So there are few derivatives you can see the pattern 0 x to the power 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 they have a nice pattern. If we draw the graph of few functions like this has five functions the first one is fractional 2 0 which means zero order derivative of x square which is just x square so it's a parabola and then I have 0 0.5 it means half derivative of x square next this line and then first order derivative which is straight line 2x and then 1.5 order and then finally second order derivative of x square which is just 2 so it's a, this blue line. So there are few curves that I have drawn there. Now you can see that this parabola is slightly moving to this to this and finally this straight line and then finally straight line. If we take more derivatives like here I have few more same uh, starting point x square. So I started I took the function y is equal to x square and I started differentiating it from 0 order to 2 order. So 0 order mean the function itself and then 0 0.2 order, 0 0.4 order, 0 0.6, 8 and then 1 which is 2x and then so on. So you can see that how this curve is gradually moving from one shape to another shape. Okay, we can take more derivatives, the same range but I have taken more derivatives and you can see that how curve nicely is transforming from one shape to an other shape. We can even have some animation. Here I have the same function fraction 2 alpha. It means a derivative of x square of order alpha and I am taking the values alpha from 0 to 1. And here you can see that this is the function itself x square alpha is here 0. If I take a little bit to right it means 0 0.1 this is the 0 0.1 derivative of x square and then 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 and finally alpha is 1 which is the first derivative of x square which is 2x so you can now see how this curve moves from one shape to n other shape. We can even change the values to some bigger level of alpha like 2.0 and we can have this animation to even see till alpha is 2 which is the second derivative of x square which is 2. So this is the line y is equal to 2. So this is the benefit of fractional calculus that we are able to differentiate any function of arbitrary order. Okay, now I am taking few more examples like what happens if I differentiate y is equal to c which is some constant or you can say that c time x to the power 0. So here n is 0 the power of x 0 and I am taking the half derivative of a constant function means half derivative of some constant function would be equal to according to formula this is the formula I need to put n 0 and alpha half so this becomes 0 factorial which is 1 and then gamma n minus alpha n is 0 minus alpha which is half plus 1 which is half and x to the power n minus alpha n is 0 alpha is half. This simplifies to 0 factorial is 1 and here so uh, actually this is 1 not half uh, n minus alpha plus 1. So 1 minus half is gamma of 1 half x to the power minus 1 by 2 and using the property of uh, gamma 1 half which is root of pi so I get 1 over 
root of pi and root of x. Here the result as you, you can see that is surprising. So I differentiate a constant function and I didn't get the answer 0 like we have in classical calculus whenever we differentiate a constant function we, we get 0. But here in fractional calculus the half derivative of constant is 1 over root pi times root x which is no longer a cos 0. It is even no longer a constant function. It is even undefined at x is equal to 0 which is violating one more property of polynomial like we know that if we have a polynomial we can def always differentiate a polynomial one time two time as long as we want because polynomials are and very good functions they have the whole real line as their domain they are continuous they are differentiables so here i have a polynomial which is c constant zero polynomial in normal calculus is classical calculus when we differentiate a polynomial which is a continuous function anywhere and its derivative is also continuous but here for this particular example if I differentiate a constant function I get the function itself is continuous its first, first derivative which is 0 is also continuous but somewhere between the half derivative the half derivative of this constant function which is 1 over root x which is clearly undefined at x is equal to 0 so it is not continuous so though we are able to find the fractional order derivative of some functions the results are a bit surprising so in coming lectures we'll see why this why this happens and how we going to cover these issues how we could able to redefine our this fractional derivative definition so that we could able to get maximum results which match the results we have already in classical calculus.